Yeah. It has come to our attention that a mysterious force is loose. The mysteries of creation are there. Up in the sky? Up in the sky. It's not an easy skill to learn. I've been practicing it for many years. So what is going on everybody, it's your favorite ninja, SetsBK1 from Ninja Nation Gaming, and today I'm bringing you a very easy to follow easter egg guide for the new World War II Zombies map, The Shadow Throne. In this video, I'm going to be showing you a really easy way and order to get the steps done so that you're all finished with the easter egg steps by round 10, simple and easy. As well, I have taken the time to make sure I include all the Morse code locations, totaling six, not three like many have assumed. Also, I've included every spawn location for all parts, including all 10 clown locations. Now, I mention this because I see a lot of guides being rushed and posted early simply to cash in on views while leaving this information out of their videos, and they do a very sloppy job of understanding the map and explaining the actual steps. So I decided to make this very in-depth easter egg guide to make it super easy for everyone. Now I'd appreciate it if you all took 2 seconds and hit that like button on the video. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe for more easy to follow guides and tutorials. Now before we get into the video, I want to let you know what is required for this easter egg. Number 1, teamwork. Number 2, communication. You're at your best when you're working together. With that being said, I recommend you start up the match with all four players using Shell Shock and Sustain Zone. This will come in extremely handy when it comes to the boss battle later on. On top of that, you want three players with at least one nuke each and as many full meter charges as possible. The fourth player should use a double jolts and as many max ammo consumable charges as possible. Now that you have that set up, it's time to start the game. At the very start of the match, you want the player with the double jolts to hit their consumable the moment you see round 1 appear on the screen. As soon as the double jolts is active, you want the rest of the players to all hit their nukes. If done correctly, this will not end the round and will give each player a total of 2900 points, which collectively is more than enough to open every section of the map and get started with the easter egg steps right away. So the first step to the easter egg is pretty simple. You want to walk over to the radio on Main Street and take note of the model number on the top left hand corner. Now what you want to do is go to the church area and look on the map to locate the red pin. In this gameplay, I had the red pin located on Odor Spree. Now on the chart to the left, locate that named area and match up the radio model number. So for instance, in this gameplay, I had model number ZX. So I locate ZX in that area on the chart, Odor Spree, and locate my two frequency numbers, which were 51 and 71. Now don't worry about the decimal points, just write down the two whole numbers and enter them into the radio. This will allow you to contact the Russians. Now they will prompt you and ask you to lure the blimp in closer by firing the flares located here in this box by the zombie holding a flare. But we don't want to do that just yet. We're going to come back to that in a minute. Now what I suggest you do is go locate the frequency for the Morse code which is in one of these six locations and they change every game. There are three of them located inside the museum. The first one is right here at the bottom of this pillar. The second and third ones are right here on this marble square in the middle. One of them is on the back and one of them is on the front at the bottom. The next location it could be is in the theater right on the stage on the side of this dresser as you can see here. And it can also be on the opposite side of the stage etched into these crates you see here. The last confirmed location is over in the apartment area inside the elevator on the right wall. Now once you've located the frequency numbers go back and enter them into the radio the same way you did before. If done correctly, the red light should turn green and you will begin to hear a bunch of beeps. This is your Morse code. Short beeps are dots, long beeps are dashes, and pauses in between series of beeps are spaces indicating where one set of Morse code begins and ends. Out of this Morse code, you should be able to decipher three numbers which you will use to open the closet in the church to get the golden bolt. 
Once you have your three numbers deciphered, head to the upstairs area of the theater and pick up the magnifying glass you see here on the couch. This is what you're going to use to pinpoint a certain location on the map in the church using the numbers you deciphered. In this gameplay, our Morse code gave us the numbers 811. So on top of the map, we move the magnifying glass over to the number 8, then down to the number 11. Then exit the map, leaving the magnifying glass on that location. If done correctly, this should open up the closed door to the right of the map and you should be able to pick up the golden bowl located inside the closet. Now head over to the second floor of the museum and place it down right here on the scale. Now that you're done with that, we can move on to the next step. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is locate the blunderbuss battery in one of these three spawn locations around the map. The first spawn location is right upstairs in the theater on the edge of this war weapon box. The next location is in the museum on the second floor on top of this other war weapon box. And the third location is right downstairs in the museum next to the shield on top of this third war weapon box. Once you locate the battery, pick it up and you're ready to move on. Now that you got those out of the way, it's time to get ready to build the blunderbuss. Now we go back to that box of flares and send up one to lure the blimp in. We didn't do this before because once you call in the blimp, it starts to make the fire zombies which are a pain to keep alive. That's why I suggest doing these other steps first to get them out of the way. Now once the blimp gets close enough, it shoots out these four anchors that are located around the map and you have to charge them with the blunderbuss to lower the chamber which will eventually take you up to the boss battle in the blimp. Now you don't have to worry about this step now. Right now what you should focus on is getting a geist bolt by meleeing a fire zombie. You don't have to do anything else. Once you kill the fire zombie, the bolt will automatically show up in your hand. Now you can run down to the spawn area and insert the battery into this gate. Once you enter, place the geist bolt on the blunderbuss and go back to where you put the battery in the gate. Hold square or X to pick it back up and this will lock the gate again with you inside. Now take the battery and place it into the blunderbuss and pick up the weapon. Now all you do is shoot the gate with the weapon and its energy will charge the gate letting you out. Now you have everything you need to go and unlock Pack-a-Punch. First you want to blow up these two panels that you see here on the screen and then you want to charge the fuses with the blunderbuss. Doing this will automatically unlock the Pack-a-Punch inside the elevator. And now you're able to Pack-a-Punch all your weapons. Now once that's all done, you want to let the blimp transform another zombie into a fire zombie. And now what you want to do is melee kill it right next to one of the shield locations. If done correctly, the fire zombie head should get stuck in the shield machine and you can now pick it up and place it in the golden bowl you placed in the museum earlier. Now it will say balance the scales. Next what you want to do is kill zombies and fill up the soul box inside the golden bunny next to the scales. Once you've killed enough zombies you'll hear a completion sound and now the drawer will open revealing the Nazi axe. Pick up the axe and go place it down in the weapon slots on the wall next to the big doors by the church. Now head up to the burlesque and on top of the projector shoot down the film reel. It'll drop right here on the floor, pick it up and place it inside the projector. The next thing you want to do is go back to the apartments area and by the bed next to the dead body, pick up the dancer's painting and bring it back to the burlesque and place it next to the projector. Now take out your blunderbuss and power the projector. After doing this you will see a map with a green light flashing on the screen. Next you have to go around the map locating these clown dolls which correspond with the green light. And here you need to start killing zombies in these areas but you need to kill them one by one slowly counting how many zombies it takes to fill up each area. Now every game you will have to do this in four areas but there are 10 locations for these clown dolls. So on the screen I will be showing you all the locations. The first location is right here in the cabaret. It's on the floor in the stage. The second one is right outside the door in the plaza in the little pit. The third one is on top of this little door piece right here by the church. The fourth one is right on top of Double Tap. The fifth one is in the museum on top of the chandelier. 
The sixth one is located right in the middle of Main Street. The seventh one is located in the destroyed building area on the floor next to Pack-A-Punch and is a little hard to see. The eighth location is right in the spawn area right by these bars on the wall. It's a little hard to see as well but as you can see it's right here. The ninth one is in the area where you build the blunderbuss right on the floor. And the tenth and final location is in the apartment area located in the elevator section. Now that you know all the locations, it should be easy to figure out where the green flashing light wants you to go. Once you find the corresponding location, start killing and remember to count how many kills it takes to finish each location. Every time you finish one location, you need to go back to the theater and see where the green light moves to next. It only moves to four different locations every game and repeats its cycle. The number of zombies that you kill in each location will be your code to unlock the safe in the apartment area. Now in this gameplay, we killed 9 zombies in the first location, 4 in the second location, 9 in the third location, and 7 zombies in the fourth location, which gave us the code 9497. Now be aware that these locations will be different every game, so will the numbers. So make sure you're taking your time killing zombies one by one and writing down the numbers in order. Once you have your code, go to the safe in the apartment area and interact with the safe. Now what you want to do is spin the dial right three times fully around and land on your first number. Then turn the dial left and land on your second number. Now turn the dial right and land on your third number. And then turn the dial left again and land on your last number. After you're finished, disengage from the safe and step away. If done correctly, the safe should automatically open and inside you will see a Nazi soldier's head with a dagger stuck in it. Pick up the dagger and go place it in the slot next to where you place the Nazi axe by the church. Now we can move on to the final steps of getting the last melee weapon. The next thing you want to do is go down to the spawn area where you picked up the blunderbuss and with the blunderbuss shoot the cash register. It will then pop open revealing a picture under the drawer with a set of numbers on it. These numbers are different every game so make sure to write them down then head back up to the radio and enter them. If done correctly like the previous numbers the red light should turn green and it should say you have contacted the smuggler. Now what you want to do is go over to this area outside the theater and melee this gas cap. It will open and the smuggler will speak to you saying he needs a weapon. You will be able to place weapons in this hole but there is no way to tell exactly what weapon you should give him. It could be one of every weapon type. There were games when he took the starting pistol, then there were games when he took the shotgun or the MG42. So once you figure out that weapon type he needs, Place it in the hole and now you're on to the next step. Now on this step there has been a lot of confusion. Some people have been saying you have to blow up the gas cap with a bomber. Some are saying you need jack in the boxes. But all of that is not true. For this next step of the smuggler, you only need to pass two full rounds. After that, the sewer cap on Main Street will open up on its own. Now all you have to do is pay the smuggler by dropping 1500 jolts in the sewer. You will know if you're doing this right when you see the jolts disappear in the hole. If you're having trouble, try moving to a different position and deposit them. Once you have paid him a total of 1500 jolts, you need to go back down to the room where you got the blunderbuss, and you need to melee the wooden door three times. After hitting it the third time, a whistling will break down the door from the inside. There you will see the dead smuggler's body and you will be able to pick up the smuggler's bat. Now take the bat and go place it with the other weapons in the wall next to the church. Now once you have all three melee weapons inside the wall, it's okay to start killing zombies and fill up the dagger. Once the dagger is done, you need fire zombies to fill up the Nazi axe. So train up some zombies and wait for the blimp to turn them. Once they are fire zombies, bring them over by the axe and kill them until the axe is done charging. Last but not least, you need pest zombie kills to fill up the baseball bat. Once all three are fully charged, the big door will open revealing the secret courtyard. Now here's where things get a little tricky and your puzzle solving skills will come into play. 
Before we get into that, remember those anchors I mentioned in the beginning of the video? Now what you want to do is go around using your blunderbuss to charge the anchors until they go from red to green. Once all four anchors are fully charged, the drop pod will be lowered all the way to the floor allowing access to the boss battle. But before all that fun begins, you should save a pest before charging the last anchor located in the courtyard because after you drop the pod, you will now be locked in the courtyard until you complete two puzzles. Now, essentially what they want you to do is make every statue lining the walls face the big golden statue of Barbarossa in the middle of the courtyard. Now, when you shoot these statues, some of them turn 90 degrees, some of them turn 180, and some of them even 270. So they can be a little tricky. If that's not bad enough, some statues make other statues move as well. Now, you can do this with trial and error, or you can use the link that I left in the description. Someone in the zombies community was kind enough to create a website to where you can enter the way your statues are originally facing and it will give you the solution on which ones to shoot, how many times and in what order. So it really makes this puzzle super easy. Now there are four walls and four sets of statues. Every time you complete one section of the courtyard it will give you a golden raven and it will pop up right in front of the middle statue. Take the raven and place them in the order you see me do here on screen. This combination is always the same and you must place these ravens in these specific locations to complete the puzzle and unlock the blade of Barbarossa. Once you retrieve the blade, head back upstairs and to the left of the door place the blade in the mold to unlock the courtyard door again. Now that you have the blade, you're all set to enter the drop pod and head to the boss battle. You want to make sure all of your team is ready with perks, shield, and full ammo for your blunderbuss. In order to get to the boss battle, all players must enter the drop pod and charge the red battery on top with your blunderbuss. It takes a full charge from every player in the game to charge the pod and lift you into the blimp. Once inside the blimp, Zombies will continue to spawn as usual. I'd suggest saving one zombie and get ready to solve this next easy puzzle. Once you have a zombie saved, go and interact with the panels you see here. Now the key to this puzzle is you're trying to move the big blue ball of energy around using these control panels, but each control panel only moves the energy a certain route. Just follow the green wires on the panel until you get the ball of energy into the control room where Dr. Straub is conducting experiments. Once you have successfully navigated the energy into the room, sit back and watch as Dr. Straub's creation tear him limb from limb in their own sick plot twist. Once that finishes, you'll be prompted that you defeated Straub, and as soon as that happens, the round will end and in comes the big boss. Now this boss has three different stages and is only vulnerable at certain times when his parts are glowing. Here is where your shell shock, sustain zone, and hearts come into play. With good teamwork and communication, figure out who will hit their shell shock first, second, third, and fourth. Doing this will allow you to focus on the boss only and not have to worry about zombies entering the sustain zone. Now, once the fourth person hits their shell shock, hit a full meter consumable to replenish the other three players shell shocks while simultaneously giving the fourth player a double active meter. Repeating this process a few times will allow you to smoothly make your way through the boss battle. On the third stage of the boss battle, the boss will start electrocuting the floor in certain areas. Just be careful of this and continue focusing on him. During this stage of the boss when he glows, you want everyone to pull out their blunderbuss and hit him with the beam. This will do much more damage than any gun. This is where one player with max ammo will come in handy. 
If you run out of ammo during this stage, you can either collect energy by shooting zombies with L2, or you can have that player hit a max ammo. If you need more, you can either kill zombies to push the round, or collect more energy. You can also damage the boss with your weapons, so don't worry too much if you run out of ammo. Once the boss releases a circle of pink electricity, you're nearly done. Keep damaging him until he dies, and now all four players must get back into the drop pod and exit the blimp. Once you're back on the ground, you will be prompted that you beat the Steger who flew glitz. And there you have it. The Shadow Throne Easter Egg is now complete, and the cutscene begins. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this video helps you all out. I know doing these easter eggs can be difficult sometimes and that's why I try to simplify the steps as much as possible to show you that you can get a lot of these steps done without pushing the rounds to where it can get a little hectic. I plan to continue making very detailed easy to follow guides in the future and continue helping the community in any way I can. With that being said, this easter egg was a lot of fun to hunt but this video was a pain in the ass to make. I'd appreciate it if you dropped a like on it and see if we can get 3 likes. If you're new around the channel and this guide helped you out, don't forget to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss out on another awesome zombie guide or video. I'm SetsBK1 from Ninja Nation Gaming, and I'll see you all on the next video. Peace!